And this is where this is where your lack of a memory of your own takes works against you. Coming from a man who picked the Lakers to win this in six, the same could be said for you, Nick Wright. If the Lakers win tonight, do you think we're getting a game seven? No. And if they don't win tonight, they have real problems. Who, go ahead, Wilds, and then I'll explain. Well, it's a hard question for me to answer, too, because it's kind of like, you know, if I had wings and I would fly, would my, would my wings get tired? I'm like, I don't know. It's so hard to even conceive of. The mental gymnastic Nick Wright goes through to try to make these points legit is pretty embarrassing. That's why I love Kevin Wilds' response to his mental gymnastics that he's trying to perform. Last time they played, did it was it as close of a game as could possibly exist? Is that in the what we're NBA? counting now? Okay, good. No. The Super Bowl is close too. No, that, Let's run that I, back. And I guess put that, Brock Purdy in the that, Hall of Fame. And you know what? That went to overtime. Wild. Damn! Damn! And, and correct. And if a week later that game were to be played again, and I would say it is impossible to conceive. Part of the mental gymnastics or the rhetoric that Nick Wright loves to do is the hypothetical game. It always comes down to hypotheticals with this guy when he's trying to make a point in a debate, which is always a fail. Beyond just okay, Jamal Murray, so there's here's a coaching the... mismatch, it's the best so player Pubs, mismatch, my... it's home court advantage, so it's historical I agree dominance. With that. Unlike Nick Wright, Kevin Wilds doesn't use hypotheticals. He's using historical facts to back up his claims that are based in reality, not if, what if, or hypotheticals as Nick Wright likes to use. Dominance, it, not of the history, but of this series is oh this. Oh my God. Well, no, if we are talking, I'm not talking about moral victories. <laughs> God damn it! You can't make this shit up! Unbelievable. He, he's trying to do mental gymnastics and use the hypothetical and this graph to find a moral ground or a moral victory to set up what could happen. Unreal. Just unreal. The question I'm just asking is, can they win a game in Denver? That's all I'm talking no. about. No. God damn it, Kevin Wiles. I was going to say that or have someone interject and say that, but he did it for me. So credit to Kevin Wiles on that one. What, what do you mean? What, what, what is insane about it? A percentage of time leading? Like you're using that as a positive? I agree with Kevin Wells. The only reason why he has this graphic up is to set up a hypothetical or find some minuscule, arbitrary reason on why the Lakers are going to make a comeback. Insignificant graphic right here. If the numbers were reversed and it were 3-1, don't you think that would be more evidence as to why Denver is in full and total control? If the Lakers, let's just say... <laughs> God damn it! You can't make this shit up! Unreal. I just said he using this graph to set up a hypothetical and he does exactly that. He telegraphs it so well or so obvious. It's just unreal. Unreal, bro. LeBron in the fourth quarter this year, only Anthony Edwards has been better in the fourth quarter of these playoffs, or at least more points. Yeah, besides okay, him missing, besides 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 him him missing Nick, a game-winning shot. No, he's I mean, played I, great. He's ha! Got he! Ha! Got he! Ha! I, shot I, and he missed it, I, but other than that, sick. I agree with all that, Wilds, but it's about whether, it's about projecting tonight. If you agree, then your hypotheticals and projections are irrelevant, and you just really discontinued your own point about making a hypothetical and a projection, Nick, right? Makes no, absolutely no sense. Okay. I'm not giving an MVP out. I'm asking I'm this asking question. MVPs about whether or not you have reasonably Lakers can win tonight. No. I just reject the argument because it's an argument that you wouldn't allow me to make to you. About it, what? About the Super Bowl. where I, it's like, Football and basketball are different sports I know under that. different contexts. I mean, I'm going to help Kevin Wilds here. The reason he rejects this argument, it's not because they're different sports. The analogy you're making is equivalent to both of the sports about using historical facts to determine who's going to have the outcome in the game. They're 11 and they 1. Came back I don't know what else down. to say. I know you, you're, I'm, we're I'm we're down to the minutia of Bruce Brown not no. being there. No. And I'm saying they're 11 and 1. Okay. It's 0 3 0. I am. So it's, I'm out, so it's never happened in the history of the NBA? That is correct. Okay. But so the, what are we talking about? Oh! No 
anyone's ever seen a unicorn? You're like, I don't know. I've seen a lot of horses and I've seen a lot of goats. And I, I could see those things happening. Okay, that's, like, so But that's, if you've never seen, it's that, never happened in the history of the league. That it's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. So you get nothing. You lose. Complete, utter destruction and annihilation of Nick Wright's hypotheticals. Uh, all these mental gymnastic tactics that he tries to use to justify something that is completely based off of something that's not proven. And Kevin Wilds hits him with something that is proven, that is historically, <laughs> you know, undeniable that no team has come back from being down 0-3 in their right in his imaginary mind wants to find a way for the lakers to win against what history says is impossible just checkmate by kevin wilds not really much needs to be said after this let me know what you guys think in the video drop your comments down in the comment section